the first Sunday in Lent and a warm welcome to Dunkeld's online worship for this week. In line with tradition, we are going to hear the story of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness, which is usually read at the start of Lent. But those who watch regularly will know that at the moment we're going through the I Am sayings of Jesus that we find in John's Gospel, and today we come to the one, I Am the Good Shepherd. Now that's a common image in religious language. In biblical times in the Old Testament, it was often used as an image for the leaders of Israel. Sometimes when the prophets wished to denounce the, the leaders, they would describe them as bad shepherds, people who were leading the, the nation astray. But then in John chapter 10, that idea is developed by Jesus to describe his own task as the good shepherd of the flock. Now we all know from Sunday school days that in Palestinian shepherding they led from the front. So they would call out, their sheep would know the, the shepherd's voice and follow, unlike today where we tend to move sheep by driving them from the back with dogs or quad bikes, whatever technique is used. And if anyone has ever tried to, to move sheep then you'll know that if you try and get the flock together, one will go off at a tangent and when one does that, they will all follow. Usually when you get near the gate where you want them to go through and one will just dart off to the side. But in biblical times, the sheep followed. They heard the shepherd's voice and they would go in trust. If these sheep knew me and had heard my voice and I fed them regularly, then they would come to the fence and trust me. But they don't trust a stranger because it's a voice they don't know. So if I went in there, it would scatter the flock. There's a rich seam to explore there as we seek to understand what Jesus meant by being the Good Shepherd. And we begin with a version of that best known of all shepherd passages in the Bible. It's a modern version of Psalm 23 written by Stuart Townend, The Lord's My Shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd, I love God. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. you are with me and your world and sound. 
very truth I tell you, the man who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in in some other way, is nothing but a thief and a robber. He who enters by the door is the shepherd in charge of the sheep. The doorkeeper admits him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them all out, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, they will run away from him, and because they do not recognise the voice of strangers. This was a parable that Jesus told them, but they did not understand what he meant by it. I am the good shepherd, I know my own, and my own know me, as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Let us pray. Lord, our shepherd throughout life, in a world where it's difficult to know who to trust, we are thankful that we can trust you. You are our refuge and strength. On you we rely when our own strength is gone. When we don't know who else to turn to, you graciously welcome us and lead us home to our Heavenly Father. Sometimes we are hesitant to follow because our wrong rises up to accuse us. We don't feel worthy because we know our own double standards and our shoddy actions. Then we remember that you already knew that and still called us to be yours. Heal and restore us through your forgiveness. Give us grace to change our ways. Your voice comes in many guises, but we listen now for your word to us, which is fresh every day. Lead us in your ways, as we place our trust in you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us these words. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The big question running through all of this, of course, is whose voice can you trust? How do we know the authentic voice? That couldn't be a more relevant question than it is now to our time. We have so much information at our fingertips, but along with that goes a whole plethora of misinformation. You know, if, as I do, you waste some of your life scrolling through Twitter, you'll know how difficult it is to know what's true and what's not. How do you know a tweet is written by a real person and not generated by some algorithm or something? How do you know when someone puts a bit of information out there that it is true? Well, at least in the good old days of newspapers, you knew the ones you trusted and you knew there was editorial control. You might like or dislike it, but at least you could have a degree of confidence that responsible, respectable newspapers would check out the facts before putting them out. And we know, yes, it was open to manipulation and sometimes misinformation too, but that problem has exploded exponentially with the rise of all the information we have. Trump trumpeted about fake news. Anything that doesn't fit his narrative denounced as fake. In the past uh, week, with all the tragedy unfolding in Ukraine, for the first time I had a look at the news on Russia today, before Sky uh, took it off air. 
I couldn't believe the blatant disregard for facts and the slant it presented on events. You know, neglecting to tell people what actually was happening to innocent folk on the ground. So do we trust Russia today? Fox News? The BBC? Channel 4? Or, or what do we do? Which is the authentic voice? What would the situation be in Russia now if there were a free press and open debate and a free flow of information? So how do we navigate the morass of information in our simple lives? Well, the promise of the Good Shepherd is that we will hear and recognise his voice. I know even the Good Shepherd struggled with the choices he faced. He had to go into the wilderness and spend time in prayer and meditation working out what the true prompting was. And that happened during his temptation in the desert. Here's the account in Luke chapter 4. Full of the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan, and for 40 days he wandered in the wilderness led by the Spirit and tempted by the devil. During that time he ate nothing, and at the end of it he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, Tell the stone to become bread. Jesus answered, Scripture said man is not to live on bread alone. Next the devil led him to a height and showed him in a flash all the kingdoms of the world. All this dominion will I give to you, he said, and the glory that goes with it. For it has been put in my hands and I can give it to anyone I choose. You have only to do homage to me and it will be all yours. Jesus answered him, Scripture says, You shall do homage to the Lord your God and worship him alone. The devil took him to Jerusalem and set him on the parapet of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for Scripture says, He will put his angels in charge of you, and again, they will support you in their arms for fear that you should strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It has been said, You are not to put the Lord your God to test. So having come to the end of all these temptations, the devil departed, biding his time. Going back to the reading from John's Gospel, it says there that the man who climbs into the sheepfold some other way is a robber. He doesn't come in by the gate as the good shepherd would. He goes over the fence at the back. So that's the te technique of the tempter. Let's not be too honest about this. We'll gild the lily. We'll call truth lies and lies truth. We'll call good bad and bad good. That's what the tempter says to Jesus. You could do so much if you controlled the purse strings or the wheels of power. Just bend a little, compromise on your truth and integrity here or there, and you can make such a difference. Don't be so moral and po-faced about stuff. You could have the world at your feet and think of the good you could do. If only you'll bow down and worship me. Play the game my way. And you'll notice the tempter even uses the Bible to try and, and take Jesus off the, the way he's chosen. He quotes a psalm. Does it not say if you fall, he will send angels to protect you? And he, and he tries to convince him that way. So which way should Jesus pick? Should he adopt the methods of the world? But then he knew where that leads. It leads to dishonesty, to half-truths, maybe a bit of trampling over people who don't matter too much, shoving them aside to get to the goal you want. It's the philosophy of the end justifies the means. But not for Jesus. The means and the ends are one and the same. They're a continuum. What's the point of gaining all the world, he said once, if in the process you lose your soul, if you lose what really counts? your integrity and truth. So let the light in. Let it purify because the truth will set you free. We've heard a lot about oligarchs in the last few days. I read about one of them who's got a house in London valued at 11 million. He doesn't own it, of course. He claims he rents it. It's owned by a company. 
And lo and behold, it's a shell company set up by that very same person. That's the way of the world. Come over the back fence, say something which sounds plausible, but, but which is not the whole truth. But we know the authentic voice. We hear it. It's a voice which speaks of justice and mercy and kindness and healing and self-sacrifice, reconciliation, truth. The voice which leads to still waters and green pastures. Whereas the voice of the tempter, the robber, speaks with forked tongue. Tries subterfuge, underhand means to justify their own ends. And such a shepherd only comes to destroy. It leads to violence to trampling down the poor, it leads to division and hatred, where the doorkeepers of information indulge in duplicity to prop up their lies. It leads literally to a hellish situation. At an Ash Wednesday service during the week in St Mary's Episcopal Church, we heard a passage from Isaiah 58. This is the fast I require, says the Lord, to loose the fetters of injustice, to untie the knots of the yoke and set free those who are oppressed. Is it not sharing your food with the hungry? Taking the homeless poor into your house, clothing the naked when you meet them? Then your light will break forth like the dawn. That's the fast the Lord requires. That's what the authentic voice leads to. In him is truth. Jesus once said in relation to something totally different, if it were not so, I should have told you. That's his approach. In him there is no fake news, but the voice of the good shepherd, the one who leads to light and truth and life. Where then does the Good Shepherd lead? You know, I'm always struck in Psalm 23 by the change in mood that occurs kind of halfway through. It goes from the active to the passive. It begins with statements like, the Lord is my shepherd. He leads me to still waters, to green pastures. He leads me in paths of righteousness and so on. But it's when it comes to the dark valleys, there's a change. Even though I were to walk through a valley of deepest darkness, you are with me. The shepherd is no longer the one taking us to those places, but the one going through them with us to the other side. So it implies that this is not God's will, but rather it's something that happens and he will guide us through it and his rod and staff will comfort us. 
so common for people to ask the question, why has God done this to me? And it's a very natural and, and normal question, and, and quite often we are angry with God about things that have happened. But the psalm indicates that this is not the shepherd's doing. But through life there will be dark valleys and dark times, and he, his rod and his staff, will go with us to lead and comfort. However, it's in those times that we must listen even more intently for the shepherd's voice, because it's in the darkest days when we can be tempted off course by the wrong voices, the voices that promise revenge, the, the satisfaction of getting your own back. It's easy to heed the voices of hatred and bitterness and anger. Probably like me, <clears throat> you find yourself watching the news just now and there's, there's, of course, utter sorrow and disbelief. Sometimes, though, do you not detect that momentary urge of anger and hatred? You feel it in your bones that you just want to hit out at the perpetrators in all of this. And that's at, at, at this safe distance with no personal involvement. When we are in, in the darkest of valleys, when we are the ones there, it's so easy to be swamped by thoughts of revenge and hatred, to turn, it, to turn us into the bitter person that we never imagined we would be and never wanted to be. Do not give in to them, is the message here, because the Good Shepherd goes with us to guide us through the obstacles and the pitfalls. His rod and staff, they comfort us, they keep us on the right track. The other voices they are thieves and robbers. They will promise everything, but ultimately they lead to destruction. Now that psalm was written a long, long time before Jesus, of course, but he truly is the good shepherd, the one who goes with us, the one who walked through the darkest of valleys for us, who was tempted and tested in every way as we are, but he goes with us through our journey, as we follow through to the other side, to the groaning table and the overflowing cup that he's prepared for us. We lay our broken world in sorrow.
so many tears have been shed and so much sorrow endured in Ukraine these last days. We can barely believe it possible. The cries of the suffering are raised up to you, Lord. We lay our broken world in sorrow at your feet as we pray for lives torn apart by war. We can hardly bear to watch the news, to see homeless refugees, families parted in circumstances that a few days ago they never imagined possible. Brave people staying to resist, returning to help, to give aid, to report the facts. And the perpetrators justify their actions with spurious claims. How can the world be led by such evil shepherds? We cannot understand, but earnestly pray for peace. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, teach us in all things to listen for your voice before we do anything else. For we confess that when lured away by other voices, we have lived to regret it. In the confusion of voices around us, we pray for the ability to tune in to the Holy Spirit. And when lives here are confused and tired, we cry out to you for our friends and family, whose lives are blighted by sorrow and illness. Draw near, and in Christ may those we name find help and hope through the gospel of your eternal love and everlasting purposes. May your kingdom come quickly, Lord, to heal the wounds humanity inflicts and the suffering people endure. We pray these and the secret prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
And now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.